It's a crazy time in the world. Right now, it's best to just stay inside and practice social distancing. This might be a great time for some movies with the family or relax and enjoy one by yourself. It might be the time to check out Disney Plus. This is my Disney Plus review for 2020. Hello tech friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Craig. I love tech and seeing what it can do for us. If that sounds like something you're into, stick around. Now this isn't a sponsored video. I've just been using Disney Plus for the last five months and thought it'd be a good time to share my thoughts. Disney Plus has been out since November of 2019 and I've been using it since. It became a very popular service right at launch. I think partially because of the price for the sheer amount of content you get. But you may be asking, is it worth it? Is there really enough content? Let's talk about what Disney Plus offers and how it is after five months of using it. For price, the Disney Plus streaming service is $6.99 a month or $69.99 a year. You can also pair it with Hulu and ESPN Plus for $12.99. That definitely gives Netflix some competition at that price for those add-ons. On Disney Plus, there's a large selection of Disney movies and series for all ages, but beyond the Disney catalog, Disney brings content from its other properties that include Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars. You also get National Geographic and all 30 years of The Simpsons. That's a lot of years of The Simpsons. Now let's talk about what you get on those different properties, then finish up with the experience after five months of use. First is Disney's own original content. If you're a Disney fan, you could watch Disney classic movies that go all the way back to 1930s Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You can also find all of Disney's live action movies going back to the 1940s Swiss Family Robinson. I had no idea that Disney made movies for that long. Disney also has original series going back to one of my 1980s childhood favorites, DuckTales. If you're old like me, you know what I'm talking about. For the younger kids, you can find all the Disney Junior shows. My kids, they're seven and nine, and they love the original made-for-TV movies such as the Descendants series. I've seen all three of them, and I do have to admit they're pretty good. So far in using, I've been surprised at some of the movies that have come out quickly. Frozen 2 was released November of 2019. Disney added it to Disney Plus this March instead of waiting till June of 2020. Now that is one less Disney movie I have to buy soon or rent when it comes out on iTunes. I do think the Disney content's great for my kids. Next, let's talk about my favorite animated movies. They are the Pixar movies. You get the whole catalog that includes great movies such as The Incredibles, the Car series, and my personal favorite, Toy Story. That's the movie that changed computer animation. Some of the other movies my kids love are Monsters, Inc., Finding Dory, and Inside Out. It's really, it's nice that they're able to catch up on the whole catalog of Pixar movies in one place. Like they hadn't seen the Cars movies, and now they can watch all the ones that have been released. Also, Pixar movies are coming out relatively quick too. Pixar's Toy Story 4 was released in June of 2019 and came out on Disney Plus in February 2020. I was thinking about renting it to check it out myself, and then I saw it was already there. Because of what's going on in the world, Pixar's latest movie, Upward, is going to be released on demand March 23rd. But if you wait, it'll be on Disney Plus April 2nd for streaming. Now, for the cost of four to see that movie in the theater, that's pretty close to the price of a year of Disney Plus. For my use, I find the Marvel and Star Wars offerings the most enticing. One big Star Wars original is the now popular The Mandalorian. Ask any Star Wars nerd like myself about it and they will tell you how awesome it is. Plus, how can you not love Baby Yoda? Now, The Mandalorian, if you haven't seen it, is best described as a space western. It's really well done and expands nicely on the Star Wars universe. Also, in the Star Wars world is the animated series The Clone Wars. If you don't know about that, the series takes place after Star Wars Episode II, The Clone Wars, and kind of continues the story from there. Some of the other animated Star Wars series are Star Wars Rebels, Star Wars Resistance, Lego Star Wars, and more. Personally, the one I'm looking forward to is the original series about Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's supposed to be out sometime this year with Ewan McGregor. You could also find all the theatrical Star Wars movies except Rise of Skywalker, but that's expected in mid-2020. Next, let's talk about Marvel series. 
I love the Marvel movies and think it's awesome to see them all in one place at any given time. You can watch the Iron Man trilogy, Captain America trilogy, Thor movies, Ant-Man movies, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, and the Avenger movies. You can also get a collection of the Marvel animated movies. Personally, I could take or leave those. I haven't checked them out. I'm excited to check out some of the original Marvel movies that are coming out. One of them is the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I'm curious to see that where that plays in the Marvel universe. Other Marvel originals coming soon are WandaVision and one about Thor's brother Loki. Unfortunately some of the originals may be pushed back because of the theaters being shut down and new Marvels being delayed because these originals tie into those movies. So I'm curious to see how that all shakes out. Next let's talk about The Simpsons. There's not much to say there. You get 30 years of The Simpsons. That's every episode that was made. If you're a fan of The Simpsons, you should love this. If you want to see it from the beginning, here's your chance. Go and binge watch that show. It'll keep you busy to about January of 2021. Next is National Geographic. And to be honest, I have not even dived into it yet, but there are over 30 National Geographic series, including The Dog Whisperer, Caesar Milan, Gordon Ramsay's Uncharted, and one of my favorites, Drain the Oceans, which is kind of interesting to see what under the ocean. One of the Disney Plus exclusive National Geographic shows is The World According to Jeff Goldblum. That one sounds interesting. In each episode, Jeff Goldblum explores a different topic. And then you learn more about that topic, some of the surprises of everyday things such as sneakers and ice cream. It sounds interesting, just haven't watched it yet. Now let's talk about the user experience. There is so much content I need to check out on Disney Plus, but for what I've watched, I've enjoyed it so far. Binge watching the Marvel series could keep me busy for a week. The Mandalorian alone has made it worth it for me. Did I mention Baby Yoda? He's cute. I do really like the interface. I find it to be very clean and makes it really easy to find the right movies or series you're looking for. What really helps is that they break it up into individual Disney properties. I think that's very smart. You don't want them all mixed together like you'd find on Netflix. If you want Star Wars, click Star Wars and start looking. Pixar, there's the collection there. They do make it very easy to find a movie, series, or topic uh, by the way they've broken it up into categories. They are very logical categories that point you to what you're looking for. For picture quality, it is nice that with the $6.99 subscription, you get 4K and HDR movies. Netflix charges more for 4K content. So far, I've been impressed with the picture quality. It's been great. Shows such as The Mandalorian look amazing in 4K HDR. If you're looking for more 4K content, there's a section to look for Ultra HD and HDR movies. Now disclaimer though, your experience may vary based on your internet connection speeds. If you got slow internet, I don't know how well 4K and HDR is gonna look. Now for audio, when the movie or series supports it, there's 5.1 surround sound or Dolby Atmos. Another cool thing is you can download movies and series to mobile devices for viewing on the go. That's great for traveling or possibly for the back seat of the car with the kids to keep them occupied. As for dislikes, I'll be honest, I don't really have any. I think I cut Disney some slack because of how much content you get at a very good price. Uh, my only concern would be, is there enough content for me? For my family, it's a no-brainer. But for me, I think the value is really gonna depend on them releasing interesting series and movies quickly. That way I don't have to rent Marvel movies or see them in a theater. They did great on the price. For slightly more than the cost of a digital rental, you have all that content. There's always something for the kids to watch. It's cool that they can watch the old catalog of movies. My wife always exposes the kids to some of the movies she grew up with. It would take a long time before they watch all the Disney and Pixar movies. Plus, kids watch the same movie over and over. For me, I don't know if I'd watch enough Star Wars and Marvel movies to make it worth it. I probably have seen them all on the big screen already. But the original series definitely are interesting to me. I think where one of the biggest values of Disney Plus is for those who would normally buy the Disney movies for their kids. For the cost of buying four movies a year, you get all the Disney movies. I know I'm not gonna buy any Marvel movies or Star Wars movies. They're already there for me. I think during all this craziness that's happening and having to social distance, 
Disney Plus is a great thing for some more entertainment. I can sit down and watch a movie with the family or just catch up on a movie that I've missed. If you haven't checked it out, I definitely think it's a great service to take advantage of the five day trial. Just make sure to set a reminder for day number four to cancel it. But if you're anything like me or my family, you'll probably dismiss that reminder and just keep the service. What are your thoughts about Disney Plus? Next, make sure to check out this video over here to learn about some smart home tips you may be able to use while you're home. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.